Hi, I'm Alan Carrington, and as you are looking at this slide, I know what you're thinking. Hmm, there's the word disruptive. This is an overused concept, and why he has even got a typo in the heading. Let me explain why I did both. When I am presenting at conferences and running seminars, I often give out plastic spoons to the participants to take back to their workplaces, to remind them to stir the status quo with creative pedagogy and new ways to use educational technology. <laughs> they really enjoy this and it helps to apply the disruptive thinking. What I'm talking about in this presentation is all about the students, a teacher's passion for change and the reaching for excellence. Richard Branson truly nails the essence of disruptive thinking in this quote. In the last three years, I have run seminars about using the iPad in education. I called them Pedagogy 101 and Pedagogy 201. We trained over 600 staff in 20 universities in five countries. Maybe there's someone who was watching this video that might have even participated. Let me give you some background. I worked for the University of Adelaide for 10 years as a learning designer. I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator with two master's degrees, one in education online and the other in interactive multimedia. I've snagged some very significant awards in 2011 and 2012, one of them being a national OLT citation. I bought some big bucks and got me some cool technology. I retired over a year ago, not realising, of course, that the best was yet to come. I never dreamed I could support so many more teachers. For now around the world, I am becoming known as the inventor of the pedagogy world. Now, what does this mean? And if you have never heard of it, that's okay as well. It started in 2012 as a PowerPoint slide and is all about the challenge of how do we show teachers that the pedagogy should drive the technology and not the other way round. We all do it, you know. The comments like, wow, that's a great app. I wonder how I could use that in the classroom. Or the infamous, you can't use that because we don't support it. So I decided to go back to basics, back to Bloom's taxonomy the backbone of modern teaching. If you have been trained as a teacher, you might remember this. The Bloom's taxonomy with cognitive domain categories originally looked like this in the 1950s. Then with the arrival of the digital age, a lot of work has been done. Andrew Churches, for example, in New Zealand has done some groundbreaking work on his wiki he started to categorise technologies according to the Bloom's thinking. However, no one has ever visually connected apps to the taxonomy wheel. And when I had that idea, version 1 looked like this. I published this on my blog in 2012 and began to get a lot of interest. It was 62 iPad apps categorised according to Bloom's cognitive domain categories. As people asked me questions and wanted to use it, I realised I was under some, something useful to a lot of teachers. So nine months later, it had evolved somewhat and version 2 was published. Now this was a result of two major ahas in my life. The, the real core of change does not start at thinking about learning outcomes. The core of the pedagogy wheel is all about what an excellent graduate looks like. It is all about graduate attributes and employable capabilities. The second edition was how do we use the technology we have chosen as well. And I added the SAM, SAMR model to help teachers think through getting the best out of the technology. I've always been interested in graduate attributes and believe they are the key to managing transformative learning. At the time version 2 was being published, 
I heard Professor Jeff Scott from the University of Western Sydney present on his research on sustainable education and the lights went on. There, these are 15 graduate capabilities that the business leaders in Sydney want in university graduates and it gave me a beginning point for how to use the core of the wheel. What if teachers and students could think about these at the start of a course? And while reflecting on this idea, I discovered these further skills and attributes of today's learners. I blended the two lists together and got 25 attributes. Another aha was that all these attributes were soft skills and matters of the heart and not of the head. So how do we empower transformational learning in students? This is where you begin. I asked teachers to choose the 10 most important attributes and capabilities that they expect to see in an excellent graduate of their program and draft a profile including them in the description. Then they show that graduate profile to the students. Maybe by using a wiki and get any feedback and modifications that students think are important. The result is a mutually agreed profile of what an excellent graduate should look like. Then both teacher and student commit to working towards that definition and they now have a learning contract to refer back to throughout the entire learning experience. Then they, I thought about addressing motivation. A teacher should ask of every teaching idea, activity and or assessment, does it promote autonomy, mastery and purpose in the student? These motivation questions are a grid to sieve everything in the curriculum. So this led to version 3, which followed a few weeks after 2, and I added the concept of motivation that Dan Pink in, te in, in an excellent TED te talk speaks about. People started asking for a poster, and so I published this as a PDF, and it looked like this. Would you believe that PDF document has been downloaded 100,000 plus times in the last 14 months? 100,000 copies of this poster. Is that viral? I'm not sure. But I soon learned to make the elephant in the room work for me. The Twitter sphere lit up and I think I could safely say I have seen 20 to 30 tweets and retweets every day since the day I published. I have Twitter permanently searching for my made-up word. At the moment, Google gets about 50,000 returns on the word pedagogy, but about six months after the first publishing, it showed it in the millions. So two years on... What's next? I, was, I have been increasingly asked for more and newer apps. Well, today, I have an exciting announcement. The Pedagogy Wheel version 4.0 is ready to go. I stumbled on, only a couple of weeks ago, I stumbled onto a great online resource called appitic.com, which has been developed by a team of Apple Distinguished Educators, and now the wheel looks like this. Is it much different? It sure is. First, it links to not 62, but 122 of the latest and most popular educational apps. Second, it has app selection criteria to help teachers make better app decisions. And the most exciting thing to me is that thanks to the hard work of the Appidic team, their resources are available in 19 different languages. 
I completely redesigned the poster and it is now available for download as a PDF and that as an electronic version has over 150 links to web pages. The poster now looks like this. Again, thanks to Apidic, the activity types of the taxonomy, that's the third wheel or third circle out, um, are connected to groups of possible apps that could be used to support those activities. I hope teachers are excited about this new version as I am. This is the next generation of the pedagogy wheel and you can find it here. The entire story of the pedagogy wheel so far is on my learning and teaching blog. That's tinyurl.com forward slash Al's LT blog. That's A L S L T B L O G one word. Let me know how you use it and if you can translate version 4 poster into a language other than English. I would love to hear from you. Please contact me on Twitter. My handle is at Alan ADL. A-L-L-A-N-A-D-L. Thank you.